Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 21 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover custom exceptions along with a whole bunch of other things you can do with exceptions. Now, I already covered exception handling in a previous video, but this time I'll show you how to create custom exceptions. I'll also cover how to use finally and else with exceptions. And as you saw, exceptions are triggered either when an error occurs or when you want them to. And we know that exceptions are used to handle errors, execute specific code whenever code generates something out of the ordinary, or to always execute code when something happens, such as closing a file that was already previously opened. And whenever an error occurs, we're just going to stop executing code and then jump to execute other code that responds to errors or other circumstances. And in this specific example, we're going to handle an index error exception that's going to be triggered whenever somebody tries to access data in a list that doesn't exist. So just like before, try block. And then I'm going to create a list here. And it's just going to be one, two, and three. Now what I'm going to try to do is print a index in the list that doesn't exist. So three, for example, because it starts at zero. So how are we going to handle this? Well, basically, that is called an index error. So I'm going to say specifically that I want to catch an index error. And I'm going to tell the user that, sorry, that index doesn't exist. All right, so simple stuff. And then, as we saw previously, we can also go accept and print an unknown error occurred. But you should try to avoid doing that, of course. And if we run it, you can see it just prints out a nice little message. Sorry, that index doesn't exist. All right, so that's what we know about in exception handling so far. So now what we're going to do is create a custom exception. So we're going to basically ask for a dog's name. And if it contains a number, we're going to say that that is not OK. So I'm going to create a class that is going to inherit from exception. So let's go class and let's call this dog name error exception. Very, very specific type of exception handling, dog names. All right, and we are going to initialize this just as before. And we go self and then specifically we're going to go args and kw args and then call the exception object and initialize that and then pass in the same data inside of here and now what we're going to be able to do is define what's going on here so we're going to say try dog name equal to input what is your dog's name and then after that I'm gonna say if any character is digit for character in dog name well in that situation I'm gonna raise my own exception so I'm gonna raise dog name error and then I'm gonna say accept dog name error and handle it so I'm gonna say your dogs name can't contain a number and then we can come in here and we can try this out so we can run it and it'll say what is your dog's name and I could call it dog one and it's going to say your dog's name can't contain a number all right so there is an example of a custom exception and now I want to cover finally and else all right so finally is going to be used when you always want certain code to execute whether an exception is raised or not else on the other hand is only executed if no exception is raised so let's go create num1 and num2 
and have this be a request for the user to enter two values to divide and we're going to come in and split that data at our white space of course and now what I'm going to do is create a try block and we'll call this quotient is equal to and let's cast this string into an integer num1 and then divide it by again cast num2 and then if all goes as planned we can just output this information on the screen but it won't go as planned because that's what we're gonna mess up here on purpose so we're gonna say format num1 and num2 and quotient now we can say accept zero division error which is whenever you try to divide by zero which is another built-in exception and I'm gonna say you can't divide by zero and then we can throw else inside of here and we could do something like print you didn't raise an exception so that's only gonna happen if there was no exception raised and then we can throw finally inside of here and this is always going to execute so we'll say I execute no matter what and you could use finally for example if you were like trying to close a file or something like that you could close the file inside of there alright and if we run it we're gonna ask for two numbers enter two values and we could do something like five and zero can't divide by zero I execute no matter what and then you could come in run it again and you could do five and two and you can see that it works alright so there is how we use finally and else and now I have a problem for you to solve alright so now it's time for your problem what I want you to do is to create a file named mydata2.txt and put data inside of it text then using what you learned previously and Google it or any other source you want to use what I want you then to do is try to open the file in a try block you're going to catch any file not found error exceptions that may occur in the else block you're going to print the file contents and finally in the finally block you're going to close the file also what I want you to do is to try and open a non-existent file called mydata3.txt and test to see if you caught all of your exceptions so you can pause your video and give that a try otherwise I'm going to solve it for you right now so what I'm going to do is go try and my file is equal to open my data to dot text and encoding like we did before utf8 then I'm gonna go accept file not found error and I'm gonna call it go as ex just to reference that if this exception is triggered I'm going to say print that file was not found and then on top of that I'm going to go and print out further data on that exception handle the circumstance in which the file was found so I'm going to say print file and go my file read and then after that my file close and then finally I will say print finished working with file and if we try to run it let's see what happens and it says file and it prints out some random text more random text this is all from the previous part of the tutorial but if I try to come in here and open a file that is not existent at least I don't think it is there we go tried to grab it 
and you can see that it prints the message that file was not found and then on top of that it prints out additional information which is no such file or directory exists all right so cool stuff hopefully you got that right if not that's okay just wanted to introduce some new things and get you to think in new ways and that's all for now in the next video I'm going to show you how to treat functions as objects cover function annotations and provide you with a new problem for you to solve so just like always please leave your questions and comments below otherwise